Hi, I'm Mark, and today on Outside Views, I want to talk about the migration policy of Sunak's government, plus a few updates on other topics. In Great Britain, migrants are sometimes housed on barges, and despite criticism of this practice, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak now wants to buy two more ships. The British government is once again using unusual measures in its efforts to curb migration to the island. Despite international criticism, the country now wants to temporarily accommodate even more people on ships. So Great Britain wants to continue to accommodate migrants temporarily on those ships. And Conservative Prime Minister Rishi Sunak announced that he would purchase two more barges for this purpose. One of these ships will soon be anchored off the port of Portland in southern England. Up to 1,000 migrants are to be accommodated in those ships. Despite the international criticism I mentioned earlier of this approach to unwanted migrants, Great Britain is sticking to the procedure. The government can solve this problem with courage and determination, said Sunak, and every means available would be used. Great Britain records a peak number of boat migrants who crossed the English Channel in 2023, despite the relatively tough British deportation policy. There were almost 46,000 in total, around 17,000 more than in the previous year and more than ever before. The British government wants to stop this migration across the English Channel with restrictive immigration laws. Anyone who arrives in Great Britain as a boat refugee, for example, should be deported as quickly and as possible to Rwanda or another country that is considered safe, regardless of refugee status. Rwanda and safe. Mm. Until then, the immigrants are to be held in camps, including on ships. According to critics, the project is equivalent to a ban on asylum. Soon claimed his plan against what he called illegal migration was working. Between January and May, the number of irregular entries fell for the first time in years. Observers point out that the decline could also be due to bad weather and that more people usually dare the dangerous crossing in the summer months. There is now also a repatriation agreement with Albania. A particularly large number of migrants came from there last year. Sunik's government is under pressure because tens of thousands of asylum applications are still pending with the British authorities and 7,600 migrants have already reached the country via the English Channel this year alone. Sunak promises to stop the boats and points out that the number of arrivals has already fallen by 20% in recent months, but you heard what the critics say. And according to critics, Sunak's plans are tantamount to a ban on asylum, as I said, and anyone who arrives there, seriously, if you deport people to Rwanda, it's not a safe country, as they say. I made some videos on Rwanda on my other channels. Just have a look there. Observers also pointed out that the drop in the number could be due to um, the Albania part, because, as I mentioned, they have a repatriation agreement there. And with so many people coming from Albania last year, yeah, if they know that they're immediately returned to their home country, on another policy, however, I have something positive to say about the behavior of the British government. Yeah, I know it's a surprise, but it happens. Preparations for training Ukrainian pilots in the UK have started now, and uh, Prime Minister Denis Shmyr thanked London at a meeting with British Foreign Secretary James Cleverley in Kiev for their willingness to train pilots. The first group has been sent to Great Britain. However, according to Shmyr's message, which was published via Telegram, the spokesman for the Ukrainian Air Force, Yuri Inat, made it clear to the portal Ukrainska Pravda that no pol pilots had left the country. So, what to believe? The first group of aviation specialists have left and are examining the possibility of further training of Ukrainian pilots, he said. And Shmihal himself also updated his telegram message in the evening and made it clear with regard to the pilots the first group has already been selected to be trained in Great Britain. Inat further explained to Ukrainska Pravda that it is about training at different levels of specialists, including aeronautical engineers who have to maintain aircraft on a daily basis and officers who have combat control. It's not just about pilots, Inat said. 
Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has recently repeatedly spoken of a fighter jet coalition in which several countries are involved. Ukraine is hoping for a delivery of 48 US F-16 fighter jets to regain control of its airspace in the fight against Russia's war of aggression. Ukrainian troops are conforming to NATO standards, Schmiel said. The country is indeed striving for membership in the military alliance. At his meeting with Cleverly, the head of government also called for tougher sanctions against Russia. This will bleed the Russian war machine dry, he said. At the meeting with Cleverly, Schmiel, uh, like Kiev's foreign minister Dmitry Kuleba before him, praised the fact that London would organize a reconstruction conference for Ukraine later this month. It is hoped that this will provide resources for reconstruction then. Cleverly, who also posted a photo of his meeting with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Twitter, said, Ukraine can count on our support for as long as it is needed. Along with the USA and Germany, Great Britain is one of the biggest supporters of Ukraine in the fight against the Russian invasion. The country has also been the first to supply longer range missiles to Ukraine with the storm shadows. And a good seven months after taking office from his predecessor Liz Truss, who failed disastrously, Sunak wants to make a, yeah, let's say, bella figura in Washington for the first time this week. It is the fourth meeting with US President Joe Biden in as many months as Downing Street PR strategists are fond of pointing out. With some justification, the British can hope that the US President will take more time for his counterpart than two months ago on Biden's flying visit to Northern Ireland. At that time, it was almost on the verge of, of, of snubbing a longtime ally, a bilateral coffee party that lasted barely half an hour, derided by the London press as by latte in reference to the popular milk coffee. Biden likes to point out his Irish roots, but as an experienced foreign politician, he also knows the importance of the globally positioned Great Britain for the cohesion of the West. Two honors are to be shown to London's prime minister. An overnight stay in the president's uh, official guest house and the first pitch at a Washington Nationals baseball game on Wednesday night. It can be assumed that the enthusiastic cricket player Sunak will pull himself out of the affair properly. The prime minister has already earned important bonus points by not being Boris Johnson. There was deep distrust among the Democrats of the Brexit champion and declared favorite of ex-president Donald Trump. Biden regards the exit from the EU as a serious strategic misstep, even as a geostrategic disaster. Not least because of pressure from Washington, Sunak signed the Windsor Agreement with Brussels at the end of February. The document is primarily intended to resolve Northern Ireland's trade problems, but also open the door for closer cooperation between the Brexit island and the continent. How the pro-King Protestants in Belfast can be persuaded to take part in the all-party government should also be on the agenda, as well as cooperation on economic and global security issues. While his predecessors talked constantly and in vain about a trade agreement with the world's second largest economy, Sunak prefers to emphasize unity in security policy. Well, he knows about the trade deal and the impossibility now. Even before Russia's invasion, London supplied arms to Ukraine, and since then, Britain has been an unequivocal in supporting Kiev. The island is doing well within NATO, which increased defense spending and deployable deployment forces. And in private, Sunak wants to campaign again for his highly respected Secretary of Defense, Ben Wallace, as the next NATO Secretary General. As in the clear rejection of Russian aggression, the interests of the two permanent members of the UN Security Council also coincide in their policy approach towards China. Biden has repeatedly emphasized America's protective role over Taiwan without officially deviating from the One China policy. Sunak maintains Britain's significantly greater involvement in the Indo-Pacific. The country recently joined the Trans-Pacific CPTPP agreement and is also a partner in the AUKUS Security Alliance, 
the core of which consists of supplying Australia with US-made nuclear-powered submarines. Because Sunak has softened rhetoric against the national communist regime in Beijing, he has come under pressure from China hawks within the Conservative Party, led by ex-Prime Minister Truss. Her recent visit to Taiwan may have caused headaches in London government offices. And Biden's administration experienced a similar situation last year with a visit of Nancy Pelosi, who was then still Speaker of the U.S. House of uh, Representatives at that time. From London's point of view, the economy should not be neglected either. Sunak will be the first British Prime Minister to speak to the bosses of major U.S. companies at the Business Roundtable on Thursday. Investment contracts worth billions are likely to be agreed during the visit. In addition, the Britain wants to promote an international research institution and a supervisory authority comparable to the IAEA in relation to artificial intelligence. And also, I have a small update on business sentiment in the UK for you. UK companies were more cautious in May. After sentiment improved in the previous month, the Purchasing Managers Index of S&P Global fell by 0.9 points to 54 points compared to April. That was announced by S&P on Monday in London, according to a second survey. In a first estimate, 53.9 points were determined, and economists had expected a confirmation of the initial estimate. The indicator for the service sector fell significantly. It fell 0.7 points to 55.2 points, but there still signals economic expansion. Industrial sentiment was also down, according to last Thursday's data, but at less than 50 points, and that implies a contraction in economic activity. The UK services sector continued to be fueled by growing demand for consumer and technology services, and after the pandemic, consumers would demand more services and fewer goods. The service sector also benefits from indeed growing tourism, but we will see how this lasts when the, the coronation is over now. But then I have another topic that will not particularly please the train users, because free Wi-Fi is on the brink of Britain's trains. The reason is rigorous austerity measures, and that's by the Ministry of Transport. Britain's railway is one of the oldest in the world. In 1825, the first public train went into operation, and without rail, it would not be possible to commute daily from the suburbs to metropolises like London. For this reason, free Wi-Fi on board has already become standard in the last decade. Now the Wi-Fi network needs to be renewed, but the Department for Transport is currently trying to reduce the operating costs for the rail network at all costs. As the industry portal Business Travel News Europe uh, reports, one of the items on the cross-off list is, is free internet access on trains. And that is why the DFT has asked the partly private railway operators to cut Wi-Fi if it cannot be justified financially. According to surveys by the DFT, Wi-Fi is not one of the priorities of train uh, commuters who primarily want better prices, more safety, punctuality and personal security. And therefore, according to the Ministry of Transport, it is unfair for the taxpayer to continue to pay for Wi-Fi. Although people didn't expect that. That's probably part of the answers. The Business Travel Association, Business Travel uh, Association, yeah, they criticized the plans of the DFT and referred to other saving opportunities. The representative of the Rail Customer Transport Focus also spoke out against the deletion of Wi-Fi because the service is now standard for passengers and makes the train more attractive. And because it's standard, nobody in their answers was probably thinking about, yeah, that could be uh, gone because it's there. So it's not an important topic for them as long as it's there. But we will see how people react on that one. But I thought it's another important task. That's why I also included that. Um, maybe a lot of people haven't even gotten that that is happening. But um, also today, now at a point in the video that was quite long, where I, I'm probably alone with the long-time viewers that really appreciate my content, I, um, so to speak, have a little favor to ask. Um, you might have seen the banner 
up there during this video and I will keep it for, for a little time on, on my videos at the moment. I'm thinking back and forth on, on a new channel in, in, in the recent months and uh, also a friend of mine always pushed me to do it and uh, helped me with my decision making. Um, Mugi, you know who I mean. And um, I really am thinking about doing this, but uh, it will be another topic that has nothing to do with politics and I need to broaden um, my viewership a bit um, to keep this channel going. It's my first channel, it's the important one, um, but I need, that's why I have so many channels, to put it on a broader basis and some basis that also brings in um, a little bit more um, income from, from the advertisements. That alone is not that great on this channel, but I need to keep this channel alive. And there you can uh, help me a bit because the, the income from advertisements here on, on this channel is not that great. I need some help for the new channel because um, I need to do a, a little investment if I want to bring proper videos on the current uh, stuff going on on a certain topic um, because I'm going to open uh, uh, as soon as I can a Star Trek Fleet Command channel. I talked about me playing this game in, in my spare time but I was thinking about making a cha channel on this with uh, explanations that are usually not out there and uh, that can be done with my experience there. But I need still need to do some more investments there with uh, for some very current things. And especially this week, for example, a new event arc is starting. And with the income from, from YouTube, it's, it's not that easy to do for me. And I know some people are out there who don't like Star Trek, but who appreciate my content. I know, um, I heard from, from uh, several of you that you are not the kind of persons that are regularly supporting something. You just want to do, um, from time to time, a, a single um, support. Um, and for those, this is the time where it would really help me growing outside views and getting outside views on a broader basis. So if you appreciate the work I'm doing and if you can, of course, I know in the, the situation has become better, but it's not uh, improved to, to levels before the whole crisis stuff. But if you can, um, now would be a very good time um, to support um, Outside Views a bit for the creation of, of the new channel and uh, to, to help with the things that are needed for, for the videos there. And um, that's why I put the, the PayPal ad advertisement up there for the ones that want uh, to do some, some single um, supporting there and not want to become patrons for, for uh, regular deductions or something. And of course, only if you can, if you want, and if you um, really appreciate the work I'm doing. That is um, something, yeah, I'm starting to babbling here, but I, it's not easy to do something like this. And uh, also um, to ask people for support is not something I usually am good at, <laughs> but sometimes it's necessary and my work is important to me. And so that's why I'm even jumping that cliff um, by, by doing that because my work is important and I made some technical tests how I can do it with, with that channel and uh, I, I figured it out and so that's why I want to start. And um, that's why I could need your help and it doesn't matter how much it is, it is from, um, from, from you. Um, in the end it will matter how many people um, will support that new project but indeed every single pound, euro, dollar, whatever, which one dollar, peso, yuan, yen, whatever counts to um, get this new channel started. And I would really appreciate your help. And uh, I know that some of you do appreciate my work. And that's the, the reason why I brought this babbling part into the video today. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, it's just important to me. And uh, it would be great if people would want to support outside views 
on creating this new part of the broader outside views family. And I'll see you in my next video and I'll be back.